It takes two and a half hours by boat to find the place where emotions over North Korea are at their most raw. Yonpyong is a tiny outcrop of South Korean soil. But history, not geography, has determined this island's place, and so it lies just a mile from its northern enemy. The daily ferry is full of soldiers. A warship is moored offshore. It's clear the moment you arrive here that this is an uneasy place. <laughs> Mr. Pan is 69. He's South Korean by accident. Born just a few miles from here in the north, he moved to the island just before Korea was split in two. Yonpyong became part of the south, and so did he. But if that could have been a lucky escape from what the north, just there, has become, it hasn't worked out like that. He lives in fear and recalls the moment two years ago when North Korean artillery shells fell on this island. The bomb slammed into our village, he tells me. Four people were killed. After the war, one country became two, he says, but we're one ethnicity, and because of the dictatorship in the north, there's no freedom, we're constantly threatened. There are signs of the military all over the island. A repeat of the 2010 bombing is considered likely. Between sea and land is barbed wire, and on the cliffs are South Korean machine guns. 2,000 people live on Yonpyong with 500 soldiers to protect them. But because of the threat, no one invests here and no one comes. It seems to be a forgotten corner of what is otherwise one of Asia's most prosperous countries. 89-year-old Lee Ki Moon can hardly walk. He too was born into what is now North Korea, and he remembers the war between the two countries in 1950. All these years on, he still feels threatened. What can I do, he tells us. There's no place to go. I have to be here, and I'm very nervous. North Korean territorial waters are just two kilometers that way, and yet the South Korean mainland is more than 100 kilometers away. And so the people here on this island genuinely feel very threatened and vulnerable. They go to bed every night wondering whether or not the North Koreans might just attack again. In a hut on one of the island's back lanes, we met a group of elderly women in from a day's work and keen to talk. Whenever I watch television, I see Kim Jong-un laughing and pointing to our island. It makes me very worried. If you haven't experienced this, you wouldn't know. They are constantly threatening us. What are we elderly supposed to do? In the background, another islander shouts that the British should help get rid of him. The irony is that Kim and his regime won't be removed with force anytime soon, even if he bombed this place again. Mark Stone, Sky News on Yongpyong Island in South Korea.